So a pleasant day, my dear STEM student. I am searching. I will be teaching you all about the different methods or rules in naming chemical formula. Okay. So there are so many rules in naming. So kaya ang ginawa ko, uh, ginawa ko ng part 1 and part 2 this particular discussion para hindi kayo masyadong bombarded dun sa mga different rules na ginagamit in naming chemical formula. So, in our discussion, we will be discussing all about binary ionic compounds, binary ionic compounds with transition metals. Um, the transition metals are located at the middle part of your periodic table. You call it the B family elements. Okay? So, pag merong ganoon sa chemical formula, there are two methods that we are going to be using. One is the traditional method and the other one is the IUPAC way of naming. IUPAC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Okay? Then, the other one is naming binary covalent molecular compounds. Okay? So, pag sinabi naman natin molecular, molecular compounds, these are compounds that contains non-metals. Okay? And then, the last is binary acid. So, I'm going to teach you how to name binary acid. Okay, what you need? So, you only need your periodic table of elements and the list of monoatomic and polyatomic ions with their charges. Lahat naman to nasa periodic table. So, you just simply look at your periodic table. Means na nasa back part or nasa front part ng inyong periodic table. Okay, so what are the different major ideas to remember when naming chemical compounds? Number one, in an ionic compounds, so when we, when we deal with ionic compounds, these are compounds containing metals and non-metals. Later on, I will teach you how to identify what kind of element is present in a given chemical formula just by simply looking at your periodic table. Okay? The net charge of this ionic compound is always zero because these are neutral compounds. Number two, the IDE suffix or the IDE ending generally indicates a binary compound. Also, and then the other rule is when you name <clears throat> monoatomic ions and these monoatomic ions are non-metals, usually you modify the name of the non-metal and ends with IDE suffix. Okay? So number three, an eight or eight ending usually means there is a polyatomic an ion in the chemical formula. So there are two types of ions, namely monoatomic and polyatomic. Pag sinabi natin ions, these are atoms with charges. Mono means one. So meaning, ang symbol lang ng monoatomic ion is one. Okay? Pag sinabi natin polyatomic ion, more than one yung symbol niya. But at the same time, meron siyang charge. And all of this monoatomic and polyatomic ion is listed in your periodic table. So, pwede nyo na lang yung tignan doon. Okay? Then, number four, prefix in the name generally indicates that the compound is molecular. Compounds containing non-metallic elements only. So, ito yung indicator ninyo that the compound is molecular or covalent if the constituent elements of this particular chemical formula contains all non-metals. While in the ionic compound, it contains metal and non-metals. Okay? Then last, a Roman numeral shows the ionic charge of the cation. Later on, we will be discussing about this uh, part, yung ionic charge of the cation. Okay, so the first rule, okay, before we proceed to the first rule, I want you to be familiar with the different root words that is being used in naming non-metallic elements. You will use this root words. So for fluorine, it's floor. For chlorine, it's chlor. And bromine, brom, iodine, iod, phosphorus, phosphor, or phosphorus, sulfur, sulf, or sulfur. Okay, so these are the different root words that is uh, commonly used when naming inorganic compound. Pero kapag organic compound, modify lang ng konte yung name, pero still, yun pa rin. Okay, since we are dealing with inorganic compounds, so dito lang muna tayo mag-concentrate sa inorganic root words. Okay, so you will use your periodic table as your guide kasi hindi pa naman kayo ganun ka-familiar with the different elements. But uh, isang technique to identify what kind of element is present in the given chemical formula, kung metals ba siya, non-metal, or metalloids. So, 
look at your periodic table. Meron kayong makikita sa periodic table nyo na parang ladder sign dyan or the zigzag part. Lahat ng nasa left side ng ladder hanggang dito, these are all non-metals. Lahat ng nasa right, uh, metals rather. Lahat ng nasa right side naman are non-metals. So just by simply looking at your periodic table, you can all already identify what kind of element is present. Okay, so pag nasa left, nung hagdan or nung ladder, yan ay metal. Pag nandito sa right, yun ay non-metal. Okay, let us discuss the first rule. In our first example, we have the symbol, the constituent elements are Mg and Cl. These are the symbol, Mg, that is the metal element. Paano natin nalamang metal element? Kasi ito yung Mg, nasa left side siya ng ladder, so therefore siya ay metal. And then Cl2, So, this is the non-metallic element. Bakit natin nasabing non-metallic element? Kasi nandito siya sa right side. Ito yung chlorine. So, madaling ma-identify kung metal and non-metal. Kasi we're dealing with ionic compounds. Ionic compounds contain metals and non-metallic elements. Okay? So, how to name? You just simply give this, uh, the English name of the metal. Okay? Paano gagawin? Titingin lang sa periodic table. So, Mg. The English name for Mg is magnesium. And then followed by the root name of the non-metal. What is the non-metal? Non-metal Cl is chlorine. So chlorine has a root word of chlor. So you're going to use chlor. And then followed by the IDE suffix. So you will name this as magnesium chloride. Next, KBr. So this is the metal element. Locate K. So, this is K, nasa left side. So, metal siya. BR, ito yung BR. So, nasa right. So, non-metal. English name for K is potassium. And then for BR, the root name of the non-metal, BR stands for bromine. So, the root name is brom. So, you will use brom and then followed by the suffix IDE. So, you will name this as potassium bromide. So, ganun lang siya ka simple. Okay, next. So, in this next slide, I have here uh, a list or data table of some of the common transition metals that we will be using. Ito yung mga, marami sila, pero ito yung mga commonly used pagdating sa mga different books ng chemistry. So, makikita nyo, meron kayong chromium, tapos ang symbol niya is positive 2. Then, isa naman chromium, sa symbol niya is CR positive 3. So, dalawa. Pag sinabi kasi natin transition elements, these are uh, metals which has variable valences or oxidation number. So, pag ganun ang case, meron tayong way na kinagamit para bigyan sila ng name. And that, the number one way is the use of the traditional way of naming. So, paano yung traditional way of naming? Okay? So, in this particular example, the constituent element of this chemical formula is FeCl2. So, sir, paano ko malalaman kung yung Fe dito mayroong positive 2 or positive 3? Kasi dalawa yung magiging charge niya. Eh. It's either positive 2 or positive 3. So, take note, dun sa writing chemical formula, ang oxidation number of the metal, remember, will become the subscript of the non-metal and vice versa. So, kung titignan nyo ngayon yung subscript nitong dalawang element na to, Fe, wala siyang subscript. So, automatic 1 yan. Ang chlorine, 2. So, paano natin ginawa yung chemical formula nito? Balik natin sa criss-cross. Di ba, kinriss-cross nyo yan? Kung kinriss-cross nyo yan, the oxidation number of the metal will become the subscript. So, pag binalik nyo siya, Sa taas, magkakaroon ulit ng charge si iron. So, the charge of iron is positive 2. Well, the other one, chlorine, dahil itong iron na to ay wala, so automatic, ang subscript niya is 1. Ibabalik niyo lang, tas mahigitan nyo negative 1. And then, always remember, kapag metallic element siya, ang metal element always bears a positive charge or oxidation number. Well, a non-metal element always bears a negative charge. Yun yung indicator na siya ay metal or non-metal. Okay? So, how to name? You give the Latin name of the metal with IC or OUS ending. So, these are the suffix used. 
Paano nyo malalaman kung U's ending ba ng Latin name or I-C ang ilalagay nyo dun sa Latin name? So, dapat familiar kayo with the different Latin names of the metals. Okay? So, kung hindi, so nasa periodic table din yun, i-check nyo na lang. Okay? So, in our first example, dito sa data table, we have CR positive 2 and CR positive 3. Okay? So, since positive 2 is lower than 3, you will use the suffix OOS for lower oxidation number. And for higher oxidation number, you will use the suffix IC. Okay? So, since wala namang latinimum chromium, chrome, chrome ang ginagamit natin. Pero kung meron, ang gagamitin nyo yung is the latin name. Okay, since ang iron ay merong latin name, the latin name for iron is ferrum, you will use ferrous for the latin name of the metal. We use OUS as its suffix because 2 is lower than 3. And then followed by the root word of the non-metal ending in IDE. So the root word is chlor for chlorine and then you will just simply add IDE. So you will read this as ferrous chloride. Okay, next example. Okay, this is iron. So the charge of iron based dito sa formula natin is 3. Mabalik nyo lang doon. That is positive 3. Positive 3 kasi siya ay metal. Positive. Okay, so pag chlorine, negative. Negative siya kasi ang chlorine is non-metal. Bakit negative 1? Kasi ang iron dito, ang subscript niya is 1, crisscross, ibabalik nyo lang sa taas, and then, yun na. Okay, next. So, how to name? You give the Latin name of the, of the metal, but this time, since alam nyo naman na siya ay higher, so you will use ICE, and then use the Latin name of the Latin name of the metal, which is ferrum. So, you will modify that, and then it will become ferric. Then add the root word chlor with IDE ending. That is ferric chloride. Okay. Next. Okay. Next example. This next example, uh, this is one way of naming paren. Pero this time we will use the IUPAC method of naming binary ionic compound. In the IUPAC method, a, we will use the same example. So, iron here is positive 2 and then chlorine is negative 1. So, in giving this uh, particular compound its name, you will use the English name na ngayon. Hindi na kayo gagamit ng Latin. Okay? So, you will use the English English name of the metal with oxidation number written inside the parenthesis. So, this is the symbol for the metal. This is the oxidation number. Ano daw ang sabi? You will give the English name of the metal and then the oxidation number written in Roman numeral inside the parenthesis followed by the name of the non-metal ending with IDE. So, you will name this as iron 2 chloride. So, as you can see, meron siyang space. Kapag itong ginalagay, sinusulat niya sa papel, iron, tapos didikit niyo talaga yung Roman numeral, enclosed inside the parenthesis dun sa name ng metal, saka lang kayo maglalagay ng space, and then you write the name of the non-metal. Kapag naglagay kayo ng iron space to space chloride, mamali na yung sagot niyo. This is the proper way of writing. Next example, this is iron positive 3 and chlorine negative 1. So, iron, positive 3, convert that to Roman numeral, enclosed inside the parenthesis, followed by the name of the non-metal, okay, ending in IDE. That is iron 3 chloride. Ganon, kasimple lang siya. Okay? So, next. So, in our next example, we will be naming uh, binary inorganic acid. Question, sir, paano kung malalaman na yung binibigyan kong name is acid? So, always remember, based on the Arrhenius uh, meaning of acid, an acid can be defined as a substance that yields hydrogen ion when dissolves in water. So, ibig sabihin, kapag tinitingin kayo sa chemical formula at meron kayong nakita hydrogen sa unahan ng chemical formula, therefore, that is inorganic acid. Okay? So, inorganic acid yan. So, meron siyang hydrogen. So, how to name? So, hindi, pag nag-name kayo ng binary acid, inorganic acid, kasi merong ibang method na ginagamit in naming organic acid. Since we're dealing with inorganic, ito yung ginagamit na rule. Kaya huwag kayong malilito. Okay. So, you will name H, not hydrogen, but hydro. 
Okay? So, hydro followed by the root word of the acid forming nonmetal. So, yung second element na yun dun sa binary. So, ito ulit yung gagamitin yung root word. So, since ang second element natin is chlorine, so chlorine is the acid forming nonmetal. So, chlorine, the root word being used for chlorine is chlor. Then, you will attach chlor dun sa word na hydro. Walang space. Then, add ik plus the word acid. So, maglalagay na kayo ng space. Pero kapag nilalagay nyo na yung, yung hydro and then the root word, magkadikit sila pati yung suffix. Next, hydro, BR stands for bromine. So, the root word is brom. So, you will add ik and then acid. Next, hydro, F is for fluorine. And then, you will use the root word for add the suffix ik and then space then acid so ganun lang siya kasimple okay next so how to name binary covalent compound this time we are be uh, we're dealing with binary covalent so pag kanina yung ionic compound pag sinabi nating ionic meron ulit metal merong non metal pag sinabi nating covalent meron tayong parehong non metallic elements doon sa kanyang chemical formula Okay, so non-metals or non-metals plus metalloids. So, yun yung mga constituent elements niya. Common name exemption. So, para hindi kayo malito, ito yung mga exemption sa pagbibigay ng name sa covalent uh, or molecular compounds. Let's say, for example, you have H2O. H2O stands for water. Okay, so yun na kagad ang name niya. Ito yung exemption. Hindi na siya nagpo-follow dun sa bibigay kong rule mamaya. And then NH3 stands for ammonia. So that is the name for ammonia. CH4 is methane. And then uh, this is C60. That is the buckyball or the, the, the buckminster fullerene. Okay. So yan yung mga name nila. Ito exemption sa rule na ituturo ko sa inyo. So hindi nyo na ito lalagyan ng name according dun sa rule ng naming of covalent. If more than one compound can be formed, from the same element, use the Greek prefixes to indicate number of each kind of atom. So, you will use the Greek prefixes. This is the first 10 Greek prefixes that is being used to indicate a particular number. And then, the last element or the second element, since we're dealing with binary, so dalawa lang naman sila, yung pangalawang element always ends in IDE. Example, CO2. So, this time, pareho siyang non-metal or metalloids. Carbon is metalloid. And then, oxygen is a non-metal. So, titignan nyo ngayon yung kanyang subscript. So, since walang subscript ang carbon, automatic yan ay 1. Ang oxygen is 2. So, 2 stands for di. So, you will just simply read that. You will not modify the first name or the, the first element, the name of the first element. Not unless meron siyang magiging subscript dito. Okay? You will not modify the, the name of the first element not unless magiging greater than 1 ang kanyang subscript. So, the name for this one is carbon dioxide. Kasi yung oxygen, dalawa, kaya di ang ginamit natin. Okay? Number 2, CCl4. So, C stands for carbon. And then, chlorine. Dahil siya'y pangalawang element, lalagyan ng IDE. Dahil apat yung number of atoms niya, magigis siyang tetra. Kaya ang basa dyan is carbon tetrachloride. Next, CO. Okay, this is 1. Pareho siyang 1. So, you will name this as carbon monoxide. Okay? Take note that the monoprefix is used only on the second element, not on the first element. Kaya okay, dito doon sa una nating example, yung dalawa, hindi tayo naglagay ng mono dito. You will not read this as monocarbon dioxide. Kasi the rule in naming covalent compounds, the mono prefix is used only on the second element, not on the first. Kaya lagi ang mono nasa pangalawang element. And then you modify it by adding IDE suffix. Next, P405. So this time, greater than 1 na yung first element, 
So, i-consider i- na natin to. Kanina, hindi natin kinonsider, hindi natin minodify yung first name of the element because isa lang naman siya. But this time, iba na. Naging greater than 1 na siya. So, i-consider na natin to. So, 4 stands for tetra. So, P is phosphorus. That is tetra phosphorus penta oxide. Penta kasi 5 yung number of oxygen atoms doon sa given chemical formula. So, this is how you name... <coughs> Molecular binary covalent compounds. Okay? So, and so, so don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos. So, see you next time sa ating uh, susunod na video tutorial. The part 2 will be uh, given to you. Just subscribe to this channel para makuha nyo kagad yung to get updates. So, if you have comment, you leave comments to the comment box below okay